Howdy. So uh, real quick, we're going to do some uh, basic testing on this Cummins ECU that come in. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm just going to do some external testing. But um, it come in for these codes here. Okay, I don't know how well you can see those. Okay, and they said the main one is uh, this top one here and this bottom one. So the uh, transfluid pressure sensor is reading high and the TCM power input signal is low. Okay, they also said in the little notes here, um, it's got good power and grounds for the transmission. coming out of the fuse panel. There's no B sent to C130 connector. Uh, let's see, I don't know what that's talking about. Uh, let's see, check the circuit C2 pin 18. So that's the uh, governor pressure sensor, C2 pin 18. So connector two pin 18 and found they are present but the ECM is not seeing the change when B plus is present when jump to the ECM well that's that's not good you can't put B plus to uh, this the signal that's 5 volt and B plus is going to be you know battery voltage which is 12 or more if it's running so yeah that you can't do that that would make it read high for sure Okay, and it says something about a tuner, so we're going to ignore the tuner part. Uh, let's check this P0869 first, all right? All right, so the first thing that we are going to check out here uh, that we have concerns about is this uh, P0869. Okay, and that was the uh, transfluid pressure high, and I have our wiring diagram pulled up here. And we can see inside the uh, transmission solenoid assembly, we have our signal coming from C218 going into that, which is basically a potentiometer here. We are getting five volts from the ECU. And we also have uh, the sensor ground here, right? And Connected to the same sensor ground is the temperature sensor for the transmission. First, let's just hook up this uh, pressure sensor. So I am going to make these connections just like what we saw on the wiring diagram. Okay, I'm going to set me a little potentiometer right there. I'm going to get my 5 volts and my ground. That does not want to stay in there. Okay, so for our 5 volts coming in from the ECU, it was C223. Okay, and that is right, 21, 22, 23. And then we had our sensor ground, which was C224 right next to it. That's convenient. Okay, and then we had our uh, signal line, which was uh, the main one we were worried about, C218. So that's 16, 17, this one's 18, right between the data lines there. Okay, <clears throat> now we are going to go into the live data here. Uh, also... I guess I just use my meter here. I don't have my scope turned on. You can use your oscilloscope or in this case I'm just going to use a DMM and I'm going to check the voltage and I want to compare with the live data to make sure that it is the same. Okay, so there is the signal and this is the sensor ground. So our sensor signal is referenced to the sensor ground. Right now it says it is at 4.9 volts. 
and if I adjust the potentiometer, we can see our voltage changes. So let's leave it at 3.2. In the live data here, let's find our reading for the uh, pressure sensor. Okay, I'm also, while I have this hooked up, I want to test this uh, transmission sensor voltage because it's the exact same connection. We just have to change our signal wire to, what is that, C228. Man, that's hard to see on my uh, wiring diaphragm there. It's kind of fuzzy. Let me check the pin out real quick. So 29, pin 29. I'm just going to move this to pin 29. All right, so back in our live data here. Let's go back and check the transmission temperature. Just want to see if this one is changing. And if we look at this, this one is also not changing. And that is not right. That should be adjusting as well. And I do have the right pin. Let's double check. We've got 10, 20... 26, 27, 28, 29. That is right. Okay, so, so far, none of the signals are changing. Let's check. Uh, I want to just randomly check another one here. Let's check the engine coolant. Because that's an easy one to check. So, going back to our wiring diagram here. We have our engine coolant sensor, and this one's a little bit different. This one does not need the 5 volt, so we're going to remove the 5 volt line from our potentiometer. And we are just going to connect straight to C111. So I'm going to remove the 5 from the potentiometer. And then I'm going to take this signal and I'm going to move it to C111, which was right here. Okay, now let's check and see if the battery temperature adjusts. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the engine coolant, not the battery. And it, this one is adjusting. You see it go to 1.4 there. Let's turn it up to 2, yep, 2.4. seems to be uh, this transmission one here and the one for the other transmission you know since they mentioned it had a tuner I'm actually I'm gonna try to flash this first I'm gonna flash it and then I am going to test those two sensors again I'm gonna test the uh, trans fluid pressure and I'm gonna test the uh, trans temp just put that there to remind me Okay, so let me go ahead and flash it, and uh, then we're going to revisit this. All right, so I've got it flashed. I've got it uh, reconnected for the um, the transfluid pressure sensor. Okay, and uh, we're just going to go into the live data here, and we're going to see if now the values can change. Uh, I just, just you know, did reflash it just in case it's a software issue. I, since I haven't opened it yet, I want to kind of see if this is going to fix it or not. Because uh, truthfully, I know the hardware layout for this. And if it's not a software problem, then it, it's likely not going to be uh, repairable. Because the uh, the main processor is what handles the uh, sensor signals uh, no we're doing the fluid we're not doing the temperature oh we could check the temperature C229 just to see if this one since we were checking them both Okay, so the temperature now is 318. Let's see if we can adjust it. So it did adjust just a hair. 
Nope. 318, 319. It's not changing. So uh, reflashing it did not do anything. Um, I will open it up just to, you know, check some stuff, but uh, probably probably not going to turn out very well uh, under those circumstances. It's just not a lot in the sensor circuit that is repairable. It, it comes in through the connector, it hits a bypass capacitor. And then it goes into, uh, you know, some limiting resistors and, you know, uh, some pull-ups and stuff like that. And then it's straight to the, the processor inside of here. So it's just, it's just not a lot to do if they're bad. And so far it looks like two of the inputs are bad. And uh, my main concern is that they said, you know, they, they checked the circuit C2 pin 18 going to the ECM. And they said it was present but it wasn't seeing any change when B plus was jumped to it. And if you jump in B plus to it, it's most likely going to fry the, you know, the uh, IO for the main chip. And I think that's probably what happened. Typically when you see the value not changing in your live data, but you see it changing, you know, with your uh, measurement tool outside, then, you know, the IO is shot. So, uh, I'm going to pause this for now, and I will maybe pick back up if it's interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll see. All right, well, I found the problem with this ECU here. This is actually not the right hardware. Um, so both of those signals are coming to nothing in here. So I, I'm... I've compared the hardware layout to uh, several other ECUs that I have open for 2004 because this is a 2004 truck. And uh, it doesn't match any of them. And when I come in to check the signal, because this is the area that processes most of the sensor signals, I, I find where the sensor signal is coming in and there's nothing there. So there's no resistors to go through. Uh, it just comes to a dead end. Um, so I think since this is one of the remands where they've taken off the label, they have actually uh, used the wrong ECU here. Uh, this is probably for maybe a 2003. I'm, I'm not real sure. I didn't didn't dig up enough to to look all the way through you know actually it might be for 2005 it's missing it's missing this uh driver chip up here which is uh not typical it's missing all the transmission controls i think it's for a manual to tell you the truth and uh i just i don't think it's the right right one so i'm gonna unhook it. I want to look at some of the other ones here. So this one is a early model 2004 and we can see this driver chip here. I can actually see the resistor for the uh, pressure sensor right here whereas this one if you look you can see the two resistors right here. If you look at this one you see it missing right there. That was for the uh, transmission fluid sensor. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the wrong hardware. This is probably going to be for uh, the manual. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's fixed. I mean, it, it's not fixed, but, you know, the problem is now understood at least. And probably why they done it is that the 2004 ECUs are actually very expensive. Um, some of the 2003s, 2005s are, you know, uh, half the price, basically. So maybe they thought they could get away with changing it. Um, this company, this uh, ACR, I don't think that they were were too bad um they never opened this i was the first one to break the seal but um 
maybe the customer just bought the wrong one, I'm not sure. But I do know that some of the shadier rebuilders will try to pass off the cheaper units as the more expensive ones. I'm not sure if that's the case here, but uh, this is definitely the wrong ECU.